Welcome to the Car Rant Podcast. Today we are talking about probably one of the best and most well-known Japanese parts manufacturers today, uh, but they're not necessarily known for their quality. Today we're talking about my experiences with Tane coilovers. To put it simply, to put it bluntly, I am not the biggest fan of Tane coilovers. And before people start jumping on my case, oh, well, they're a good budget option, all that. That is true. However, not for all cars. And that's the biggest significant difference between my experiences with Tanes and maybe someone else's. To put it mildly, I've had Tanes on a Lexus actually for quite a good while now. Um, and it's, it's, you know, I put like 2,000 miles on them, so when I say I've pretty much broken them in and I know what they feel like in my car, yeah, I think I can say that, you know. Some people are like, oh, well, you have to let them break in, they get better with age, you know. It's like, I've done 500 miles, that's more than enough for a break-in period. They've been on the car for like a month and a half. More than enough for a break-in period. At this point, any critiques that I have are for the product itself. So with all of that squared out of the way, uh, let's get down to business and let's talk here. Tane is a Japanese parts manufacturer that's well known for making parts relatively on the cheap, but they're all, when you get down to it, actually well made. Um, <laughs> it's, there's no getting around it. The quality of the parts is there. It's just not necessarily the best parts if you're buying something in the lower budget category. And to be fair, most of us are. Most of us are spending our money on Tanes because we don't have the money to buy things like Fortune Autos or Fields or, you know, BC Racing or even stuff as big as Olms and Bilstein, you know. It's just, it, there's a lot of names in the business and Tane happens to be one of those ones that's near the bottom but also near the top at the same time. They make stuff in a higher price bracket and a higher category. Uh, we have yet to try those, and I guess this video is more of a warning to people who are trying to get budget parts for their car. Uh, in my case, it was a Lexus IS300, so yeah, let's get into it. Before I even had the Lexus, I had a red 240 coupe. Ishmael and I, we went in together and bought the car called Ruby, and on Ruby had a set of i actually think they are street basis flex z's advance or whatever it's called their names are rather long i don't remember what was on the car but long story short the owner of this car decided to completely bottom out his coils on purpose he wanted the stance look he wanted the slammed look i uh, i mean more power to you i just don't know how he was able to pull it off in the area that he was living in because that was pretty pretty tough stuff to work with but with that said i mean when i drove it back from fredericksburg to where i live in the area here in northern virginia uh it just it it wasn't that great of a ride i will say it like this these were probably like the 600 hundred dollar tains not what i bought for the lexus at all but had a little bit more functionality to it things like that but we were finding that parts on it had just completely given up. You know, the locking collars that were on there, completely gone. And according to what he was telling us, he had only had the car for about a year or so. He didn't have the car for that long. He wasn't able to drive it that far. So for him to come and tell us that, we kind of sat there and went, Huh, that's not right. Uh, we need to get real coilovers in it. And lo and behold... <laughs> Because of how low it was, we couldn't actually work on the coilovers. We couldn't get it up on jack stands to drop ours down. We could have probably brought it to a lift, you know, ones that have the parts set in the ground and whatnot, so you can actually lift it from the ground. But the point is that, like, those tains, they were the combination of uber stiff and completely bottomed out which meant any little divot, any little bump, any kind of imperfection in the pavement was being translated straight up into my hands. Uh, normally, I'm about that. I have the Evo. I love my car to death. I love being able to drive it hard. And I want 
a large amount of information from my tires about the road that I'm driving delivered to me. However, this was a jarring, not so great version of that. This was a, here, we're going to abuse the crap out of your hands to make the job happen kind of pain. And like I said, parts on that, that particular set of coils were just already failing they weren't designed to last for some reason i'm not really sure i mean if tane somehow sees this video and wants to talk to us about our experience about it please go ahead uh this is not a sponsor for any other brand or anything like that it's just that having driven on the evo's coilover suspension for a good bit longer yes these were a thousand dollar and change k sport coils but i just saw the level of quality between the two to be significant the evo suspension is much better it's much better quality and the 240 that we have now has fortune autos and that's like towards the top as far as a rebuildable monotube style shock and coilover those things are amazing they're beautiful they ride amazingly well they handle perfectly uh, eventually, I would like to get my hands on a set of fortunes for the Evo, just because that was always kind of like my dream setup. I bought the K-Sports because I wanted to try something different. I wanted to give people a different option. And it turns out that a lot of you who watch our stuff uh, for the reviews watched that video and actually really appreciated the information. So, shout out to you guys who have bought a set thanks to us, uh, kind of helping be still your fears. Because here's, here's the thing, too. Uh, moving on from the 240, like the quality that we had with Ruby, let's move into the stuff that we've got with our Lexus. Uh, yes, I still have not revealed a name on that, and I've had that car now for, well, it's August, and this is recorded in November, so three months almost. Uh, actually, yeah, no, wow, it's almost four months. Dang, I've had that thing for a while. The point is, though, is that... When we bought these coilovers for the Lexus, we knew going into it, these were not high performance. These are not performance coils actually at all. These are lowering uh, coilovers. Uh, with that said, I knew I was going to get, you know, a little bit here, a little bit there, as far as rub or uh, issues with ride quality. But what I did not expect was wallowing. Uh, insane amounts of body roll feeling the car just pitch from one side to the other when I try and take a turn earlier today felt the car try to break loose because the shocks that were supposed to be like nice and even were just completely doing this under insane amounts of pressure uh, they were completely collapsing and that is on their hardest settings the maximum amount of dampening and the maximum amount of uh, spring tension if you will just adjusting that preload we have it maxed out completely all the way around so for it to still do that uh even when it's set to its hardest of settings it's just that's not supposed to be that way it's supposed to have a certain level of stance and straightness to it if you will and instead of getting that i'm getting oh yeah you're gonna go take a corner that happens to have a little hump in it here uh rub <laughs> rub you know, this car is taller than the Evo, and the Evo has more control. I get it. There's a price difference between the two, but when it comes to Tane, like, they have upped to their game over the years. I will admit that straight up right now. They have upped their game as far as the quality goes, but I still I, I want to warn people away from using Tane shocks, not because I'm trying to sabotage the brand or anything like that. I've just found that at least with the Lexus and the 240, uh, they're the bottom end stuff that they've got, it's not worth it. You're going to spend more money trying to modify your car to make that stuff work than if you were to just go out and buy, you know, a nice set of BCDRs or uh, maybe a used set of feels or a set of case boards or what have you. Because... At the end of the day, I've had to do a lot to make my car work the way that it is. Like, yes, it looks good. The stance is nice. Things like that. But as far as the ride goes, like, it's really soft. Which, it's not supposed to be soft when you're set to a harder setting. Or the hardest setting. 
You know, uh, when we were f trying to figure out what the best ride would be, I mean, I had a couple friends in the car. They sat down in the back, and the next thing I know, the entire back end of the car came down. If I put a passenger in my back seat, the next thing I'm going to see is my back seat sitting on the tire. And that is not how it's supposed to go. And there's still quite a bit of gap back there. You know, you can still fit a good three fingers in there. Two to three fingers in there, depending on how much is in the trunk. So, with that said, if you're trying to look at Tane's for a Stancy Boy setup, that's really more of a coupe, maybe? Or something that's really lightweight? Then it might work for you, but I still... I still would say don't do it because I've had nothing but problems with mine. You know, rubbing everywhere. Uh, anytime, <laughs> anytime there's someone in the back or I have weight because I'm transporting goods from one place to another, it, it sags and it rubs and it kills the performance. Uh, like I said, the dampening is set to the hardest of settings just to try and bolster it so that it stands straight and even then it's still wanting to sag. I don't know why it's doing that other than I've been told by other people that when they tried the same setup out, they also had that problem. Uh, there's guys that I've talked to at the Chick-fil-A meet. Shout out to you guys. You all know who you are if you're watching this now. They had the same issues. So I guess this is my word to those of you watching. Please, please. Like, I get it. Trying to get into cars and building your car can be expensive especially when you start getting into the better performance stuff. But in the end, it will save you more money to just save the money and buy the more expensive parts because then you won't be in the position that I'm in where now, instead of just getting good quality coils, I now need to shop online and try and see if I can get some for a decent price uh, without spending a huge amount of money because I've already spent... $500 on the coils that are now not doing their job, so I'm already in the hole for that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, like I said, not trying to disuntain. They're a great option for other cars, and especially when you get into their higher uh, performance stuff. But when it comes to their bottom tier, you really are getting what you pay for, and that's bottom dollar stuff. I just... There's not much else I can say about it. Please do... The homework see what you can find and honestly this is what i wanted to segue into on this podcast when it comes to buying these types of parts uh look on ebay people are selling their used coils and i know that sounds kind of sketchy and a little bit nerve-wracking when you think about it, like we don't know how these have been abused you know have they been driven on in a daily setup have they been tracked on how many times have they been tracked on things like that uh, at the end of it all, a lot of those guys that get these types of things uh, or try to sell them on eBay, yeah, sure, some of them are probably just like, yeah, trying to off something, whatever. And some people are trying to make money. The point is, try and see what you can find. Personally, I'm going to look on eBay to try and find some new coilovers for, for my car because I need something to give me a certain level of performance. I need something that's going to give me a strong stance, you know what I'm saying? Not one that sags under pressure or, or like rolls around when you're trying to just drive nice and even. Or anytime you hit a bump, you just feel a car go like this when it should just kind of hit it and then settle in very quickly. It, what can I say? What can I say? For me, going on eBay and trying to see if I can find a nice set of like BCDRs for the Lexus would be perfect. Because you're sure they're probably, you know, they're probably nice and used. But at the same time, I might actually be able to get myself a good deal on these parts. And I might actually be able to get the ride that I want out of it. Anyways, that's all I've got for you guys today. I hope you guys enjoyed this podcast and appreciate it for what it is. It's just me giving my testimony, if you will, of my experiences with Tane budget coils. Uh, if you've ever had them. Leave me a comment down below. I'm very curious to see what your experiences were. Like I said, some people had great experiences with them. I know a guy with a Subaru that had them on there, and he loves them. They feel fine for him. 
And then there's people like myself who's just been shafted every time we come close to the green coils. Let me know what you guys have experienced and what your thoughts are on them as a whole. Otherwise, thank you all for watching. Thanks for tuning in. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll see you next time. God bless and peace.